Father John, uh, congratulations on becoming an Episcopal vicar for our diocese and with especially with evangelization and catechesis in mind and uh, thank you for this for a few minutes with us and um, this week we've been listening to young people talking about their experience of the Holy Spirit um, very personally and uh, now it's a privilege to be able to ask you a few questions along the same lines if you don't mind as a priest of our diocese um, and so I was wondering if you wouldn't mind answering the question I've asked them all really which is um, the, the Holy Spirit in your life, um, how have you experienced or what would be your experience of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, looking back over a lot of years, um, my first kind of obvious experience was when I was a young person. Um, so listening to those young people uh, kind of prompts this thought of when I was 20 years old, um, I was a practicing Catholic, still going to, to Mass on Sunday. Um, but I suppose my faith was a little bit minimal, to say the least. Um, I knew it was a big part of me, but I wasn't seeing it that positively. But I got invited by two slightly older people to go on a, a choice weekend. Um, this would have been back in 1982, uh, I think, <laughs> or 81. It's a long time ago. But uh, I didn't really know the nature of the weekend. But uh, the youngsters, the young people who invited me, uh, were, were enthused and I kind of got carried along by that. Um, I remember arriving in Bristol, going from Plymouth to Bristol on a Friday night after work. I worked in, in the dockyard in Plymouth at the time, doing an apprenticeship. Arriving there and uh, I think if it wasn't for the distance I probably would have gone home. <laughs> uh, it looked all too, um, a little bit too kind of heavy and spiritual and, and, and whatever. Um, but by the end of the weekend I'd had quite a, a life-changing experience and uh, I remember a very uh, lovely priest, Father Danny, um, who at the end of the Mass, the final Mass on the evening before I went home, he said, I just wanted to, to give you a, a blessing. And he got us to kneel down in a, in a line and, and prayed over us uh, one by one, laying hands on us. And I've never had that, had that before, but I just remember at the time thinking that as he prayed, I just felt like I was literally vibrating like a pneumatic drill. And I was thinking, Am I, or is it just me thinking that? And hopefully no one else can see this, because I don't know what's going on, it's all a bit embarrassing. Um, so anyway, after m the Mass, um, went back home, and I was just a very different person. I remember my family saying, what's happened? You're just, you're at peace, you're, 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 not, <laughs> you're not your usual kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, Restless. Restless self, yeah, that's a nice word. For it. Restless self, uh, etc. And uh, that was quite, a, quite an experience, which, um, looking back in retrospect, I can see from that point then to, to two years later, I was actually in a seminary trained to be a priest. Wow. Uh, and that seems a long time when you're youngster, but when you look back, it's quite a short time. Um, and just getting more, being far more positive about my faith after that weekend. Uh, the two who invited me, we, we started a uh, uh, 18 to 30 group in Plymouth had about 35, 40 people in that, in that within uh, a year, and uh, just taking a bit more of a, a positive role. And I can see as well, in retrospect, God giving me a bit of a, training me to it for a bit of a leadership role. Of if you want something to happen, make it happen, you know. But uh, and that would be maybe one, one of the things I'd say of the Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit is a spirit of action. He moves you out of your comfort zones. It's about growth and 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 just doing things, you know. We often and uh, pushed me out of my comfort zones etc and that's how I'd see experience the Holy Spirit then that's maybe how it would be a constant factor to me evidence the Spirit is is something good creative and and pushes you out of your comfort zone. Sounds sounds like an exciting image of the Holy Spirit um, so here we are you're a priest of some experience now you recall that uh, that experience that uh, life-changing experience um, something I can ask you that I couldn't ask the young people is how, how is the Holy Spirit an ongoing experience in your life and ministry in the church? You, you are clearly somebody who has been prompted and moved and called by the Spirit but here we are um, with years of ministry behind you and I, I just wonder what how you experience the Holy Spirit you know, in, in the, the, the more regular work that you're involved in now. Could you tell us something a little bit about 
about that? For me, for me the Spirit, um, every day, I mean, as a parish priest, there's lots of set things you're doing mm. with masks, uh, visits to the sick, hospitals, schools, etc. Um, but the, the Spirit keeps every day kind of enlivened and quite adventurous in a way, you know. You, you start to re realise quite deeply that there's no one encounter that is an ordinary encounter. Or it, it just it just adds that energy to what you do. And I think that's vital as a priest because sometimes priests can get a bit kind of bogged down in, in, the, in the routine and, and lose the, the, the energy, the fire. And then it even becomes even more of a struggle then to keep going. Whereas the Holy Spirit kind of kind of keeps you on top of things and keeps you infused and energized you know um, there's a kind of kind of the, the spirit is almost like a, a spirit of, of a, a kind of youthfulness in a way that you can be 80 years old but you'll still <laughs> energize you, you know? um, yeah. and, and that's I think that's vital um, in, in day to day life as a priest because uh, as a you know a kind of leader of a, of a parish etc if you're not infused and enlivened and how do you expect to be, you know, you're meant to be an example to your people and, and it can't be something external, it's got to be something internal, you know, kind of internal energy which is driving you on and, and helping you um, to do that. So, yeah, it's like I see the Spirit then as kind of um, a strength with, within that kind of enables you to cope with things and deal with things, but beyond that as well, to, to still keep looking outwards and still seeing the freshness of situations and, and opportunities, etc. I do think it's quite vital for, for a priest in our day and age. Yeah. Just one last question then, if you don't mind me asking. Um, some people who are watching this might be in that place you've just described, that perhaps there was a time of greater zeal or vitality, uh, but now they do find themselves a bit weary or or perhaps um, a bit not, not so much disillusioned, but, but disappointed or... or or tired by by the events of, of life and and what would be your advice to somebody to get from there to a position of, of renewed enthusiasm hmm. a little insight came to me a few years ago um, I think it was during Lent actually with the stations of the cross you've got all the 14 stations and in the 13th Jesus is laid in the tomb and he's just lifeless he's dead you know? Yeah, and then three days later he's raised up again. I think sometimes you can get to, well people can get to a point of they just feel, they just want to lie down, you know, they're just tired on all levels, you know, physically, psychologically, emotionally. Mm. And I just had that, that image once of, okay, you, you just, you know, if someone just kind of thought themselves lying in that tomb and just opening their heart then to the, the spirit as, as Christ was raised up, for them to be raised up as well. Um, and that, that can happen, you just need to open your heart to it, the Spirit is there, you know. Believe it will happen and, and, and it will happen. And I think that I'd see that maybe as um, one image that kind of defeats that. Uh, but the other thing as well is on, on a daily level, and again I'm, I'm still very much in, at a learning stage of this, is how God actually does communicate with us on a daily level. So very subtly, and you just, just have to, your kind of antenna up for, for how that happens. And, and reading that, and then it could be anything. It could be one line from a lyric of a song on a radio that's got nothing to do with God, and it will speak to you, or, or some conversation, or one line from someone, or living in Cornwall could be, you know, so you see a lovely bird, bird soaring in the sky, and it always speaks to me of spiritual things, and almost like prayer, you know, when you, when you see a, a bird just kind of hovering and gliding in, in, in the, the warm air currents, etc. It just reminds you of, you know, a bird can either be on the ground, doing ordinary things or can be up there flying and things like that just inspire me and kind of keep me g'd up and that can happen any time of day you just kind of God can use anything to just kind of keep that line of communication open and um, and feed you you feed yourself feed your spirit you know feed yourself uh, in all your daily tasks and uh, I think as well we should share that with people and, and share it with each other because it kind of it has a knock-on effect a feed in, in effect for, for everyone you know as, as Certainly, as a group of Christians, a body of Christ, we're called to help each other. Just to stay buoyed up, you know. Mm. Um, things can drag us down, and, and you know the weariness of of a day or a task or circumstances. And we need to, let, you know, God will readily feed us. And then what we gain, we need to just help each other as well. And people will help. You know, it's a, it's a mutual thing. At the end of the day, Father John, for responding to that prayer when they laid 
hands over you all those years ago. <laughs> Thank you very much and for all for speaking today and for all your obvious commitment to a life in the spirit. Thank, Thank you, you, David. Thank you.